Good morning, Merry Christmas, and welcome to North End Church. At North End Church, we believe that everyone is welcome, nobody's perfect, and anything's possible. Hope you enjoy today's service. Here we go. Merry Christmas from our house to yours. Thank you for joining us. Let me pray. Father God, we just come before you this morning, and we're so, so grateful for all that you've done for us especially for the precious gift of your son, Jesus, whom we celebrate this morning. And Lord, my prayer would be for all who are joining us here online today, that your presence would be felt by all. Lord, that you would meet them in a very special way as they um, celebrate you, as some struggle through uh, loss this season. Lord, that you would be very present and very near to each and every one of us. And we thank you for your amazing love and goodness for us. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. When I think of Christmas, uh, it goes way back 
for me in my high school years when I was heading away from God. I really didn't have a relationship with God. I was very religious, went to church. But there's a, uh, there was a, something that happened where God really reached out to me in a very special way and I would say saved my life. Uh, so it got me really realizing how real God is. But then everything else started to become real. And I remember um, a Christmas uh, in when I was in high school, that, that Christmas, I can't remember the exact time, but it became more alive to me. I remember the word Emmanuel. You know, you're singing that carol, Emmanuel, and um, you read out of John chapter one, that he's God with us. He's God with us, Emmanuel. That word stuck to me because I realized that Jesus was God and he knew everything about me, but he also knew what it was like to be human, to go that route that I went, um, to struggle, to, to have to deal with people. And so Emmanuel reminds me over and over again just how much God loves me, that he was willing to, to um, come to earth as a human. Like, why? Like, get your head around that. It's pretty amazing. That is incredible love. And so Emmanuel is a name for Jesus that takes on special meaning for me. And I think every Christmas, that, that name of Jesus just kind of chokes me up because it's so real in my life. Good morning, North End kids, and Merry Christmas. I hope you are staying warm and cozy in your pajamas with your family and enjoying all of your time together. Every year, my niece and I read a special Christmas story together, and I was hoping you would join me. Twas the night before Christmas. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung on the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. And Mama in her kerchief and Dad in his cap, they had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there rose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, toward to the shutters and opened the sash. Now on the new fallen snow, there was a glow of midday objects below. When what to my wandering eyes did appear, but a miniature sleigh and tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be Saint Nick. More rapid than eagles, his courses they came and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now join me. Now Dasher, now Dancer, and Prancer and Vixen, and Comet and Cupid on Donner and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the hurricane fly, when they met with an obstacle moment in the sky. So up to the housetop and courses they flew with the sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of their little hoofs. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney, St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed in all fur from his head to his toes, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked as a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples so merry. His cheeks were like roses and noses like cherries. His drool like a mouth was drawn up like a bow and the beard from his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth and the smoke in his head like a wreath. He had broad face and a round big belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a night jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. I wink of his eye and a twist of my head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. 
He spoke not a word and went straight to his work and filled up the stockings and turned with a jerk. And flaying his finger aside of his nose and giving me a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away all they flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim, he drove up a sleigh, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Now I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day and your time with families. Be good for your moms and dads, and I can't wait to see you back at North End. How does it feel to be experiencing Christmas morning? Maybe you've unwrapped some presents. Yeah, you might even be watching this a day late, but we want to welcome you to our online service. I hope you're wearing your new uh, pajamas, you know, your Christmas socks and underwear. Uh, it's about time for all that good stuff. If I could lift my leg high enough, I'd show you some of my Christmas socks that I have on right now. But uh, maybe that's way too much information for everybody. And uh, we want to move on. You know, Christmas is an interesting time. Sometimes I wonder, can you say anything new, any fresh, anything that's fresh about it? And in spite of that question being asked, what we still deal with is the reality that we have just come through. Uh, there are stories of frustration, stories of exuberance, maybe when your son or daughter unwrapped the present that they'd been hoping for. And there's a lot of times some very painful stories but one of the ones that I came across, how true it is, I don't know, but it sure caused me to laugh, was a story at the mall. I think it was the best Christmas story that I've heard. And you know how parking spaces, they're at a premium. And there was a, an elderly lady who had a beautiful, beautiful Mercedes. And she's slowly moving into the parking spot that she had found at, when a young guy in a, a Porsche uh, that was, looked so sleek and so quick just came squealing in front of her and parked. And she rolled down the window and she was yelling at him. She says, what are you doing? That was my parking spot. And he looked at her and he says, this is what it's like to be young and fast. And he walked off and she was fuming. As he got towards the mall door to go in, he heard the grinding of metal against metal. And he turned and he looked and this lady with her beautiful Mercedes was sideswiping his Porsche and putting it uh, you know, out of the parking spot so that she could park. And when he came back and said, what are you doing? She rolled down the window and she said, this is what it's like to be old and rich. <laughs> and so maybe, you know, as we hear that, I hope that's not been your frustrating story. Possibly you've been cut off. Probably somebody jumped ahead of the queue, ahead of you. Hopefully it wasn't you, but we live with those frustrations. And I think some of those frustrations force us to be real, especially in retrospect. I suppose on an even lighter note, there are some things I've been trying to process. You know, how is it that some oversized guy in a red suit gets down the chimney? And uh, as hard as you might find it to believe, uh, that's one chimney that, that I got down and came right through the fireplace. And if you do believe that, I have some swampland in Florida that I want to sell you. But uh, here's something else. Can you imagine this? Heading into the Christmas season with all the parties and festivities, some magazine uh, on muscle fitness and, and overall health and wellness suggested that the best way to stay healthy at Christmas is to stay away from the food that's all rich, you know, the, the cookies, the cakes, and you know, loaded with calories and stay at the other end of the buffet table where there's carrot sticks. Matter of fact, they said that if you just munch on carrot sticks, you can stay healthy during the holiday season. Hello? Do they have a mind? Do they actually really think that I enjoy carrot sticks at Christmas? Do they think that in Christmas morning, I'm eating carrot sticks and celery and broccoli? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. Matter of fact, it's high carbs. It's, um, it's bacon, it's eggs, it's those gooey buns that are so good and pancakes. And you know, by the time we're done breakfast, we're thinking we don't really need a turkey, but you know, when the turkey comes, we're ready. Well, I hope I've highlighted a few memories for you, things that you're thinking about as we ponder Christmas. But you know, in John's gospel, he helps us to think about Christmas 
in a much different way. It's helped me so much. It's helped me so much even when we've had to change our traditions because our family lives far away and we have to do different things. And you come back and say, well, what is the meaning of Christmas? There's that slogan that says that Jesus is the reason for the season. And it is true. But I think it's lost its impact. What hasn't lost its impact is what John says in John 1 and uh, verse 14. He encapsulates the Christmas story in a single verse. He said, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we've seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. The word became flesh. You see, that verse helps me to make sense out of the season because it's all about a baby being born. God came in the form of a human being, born of Mary, born under the law, the Bible says, to redeem us who are under the curse of the law. And the curse of the law said that to anyone who has sinned, they will forever be separated from God. But for those who believe in the Lord, who trust him as their savior, it is the gift of life that gives us salvation. It says the word became flesh. It's all about a baby being born. I've pastored for many, many years, as you know. And sometimes a baby in a service uh, can be very irritating if it's crying out. But for those of you who are in a service that seems boring and maybe you think that watching paint dry would be more exciting, uh, a baby can be a great distraction. And I've been guilty as well, sitting in a service sometimes and seeing the baby a row in front of me and I'm trying to do like a Mr. Bean, you know, make little finger faces at the baby to see if the baby's gonna smile at me. And uh, when it was my own baby, you know, I'd be trying just to keep the baby quiet. But regardless of all that, Christmas is about a baby. And a baby in any meeting is the center of entertainment. And folks, at the center of our Christmas celebration, we need to think about the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The babe in the manger needs to be the center of our affection and our thoughts. When it says the word became flesh, John uses the phrase, the word, to speak of Jesus. If you go back to the book of Genesis, it says that God spoke the word and their heavens and earth were created. The sun came, the moon came, the stars. He spoke the word. And God speaking the word is a reference to Jesus because Jesus is the fulfillment of God the Father. He is God in flesh, God incarnate. This is the word became flesh and dwelt among us. In other words, when God came as a baby, he interrupted life for us with the birth of his son so that we might have real life. When it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us, it's an interesting word. It means that he took up residence. In other words, he pitched his tent because in those days, many of the people would be living in tents and we understand what that is like. It's an interesting analogy. Last summer, I went camping with my brother and his sons and uh, the grandsons and uh, we had a lot of fun. I had to leave a day early and uh, as I was getting up the next morning, back here in St. Catharines, I realized that there had been a heavy rainstorm and windstorm. I have to be honest, I was smirking, I was smiling a bit, wondering what had happened to them. And it didn't take long before the text messages began to fly, how about six o'clock in the morning, the wind had blown the fly cover off the tent, the rain was pouring in, and everyone was so soggy, they just wrapped it all up, got in their vehicles, and drove towards home and stopped for breakfast along the way. I was so glad that I had come home a day early and didn't miss that experience for the life of me. When it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us, it means that God took up residence with us. He lived among us. He pitched his tent to know what it is like to go through the things that you and I go through. And it's essential that he lived among us. Otherwise, we would doubt his ability to be our savior. You know, the writer to the Hebrews in chapter 4 and verse 14 to 16, he says these words that are so important in understanding what it means for God to understand what we go through. And it says, since we have a great high priest, which is a reference to Jesus, who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, 
Let's hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. So we have a high priest in Jesus who understands our weaknesses, what we are going through. And he says, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive grace and mercy to help us in our time of need. We've come through 2022. As we head into 2023, you and I don't know what's ahead of us, but I do know this, that we have a God who extends to us his grace and his mercy. And because he understands what we go through, we can look to him. We might not understand the narrative that he is writing, but we can look to him in the confidence that he will be with us. He will be a friend that sticks closer than a brother. While we know Jesus in this story as the son of God, John, who was writing this, his closest friend, calls him the word. God's spoken word that came and lived among us. And it says the word became flesh. You see, the word is also a, a reference to the message that Jesus brought, but also to the life that he lived. It's the message of God's love, not just about the good news of salvation, but Jesus himself is the good news. And as any baby bears resemblance to his parents, so Jesus bears resemblance as well. We see his humanity from his mother Mary, but far greater is his divinity. And it says that he is full of grace and truth. Once again, grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. What an incredible gift it is on this Christmas day to know that in spite of all the wonderful presents, we can have an eternal relationship with God, that he loves you, that he has forgiven you, that he wants to be the hope of your life and the reason for which you do life. He's full of grace and he's full of truth. I'm so thankful for that fact because, you know, we are living in a day of, of changing narratives. When people say, you know what, let's deconstruct our faith. Let's just reduce all the things that we hold so dearly and start knocking away at the footings. And pretty soon when we do that, what we end up with is universalism that always lead to God. And ultimately, we don't need a savior. But we know that's not true because the truth is this, that Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. Truth is like a plumb line. It's the measure in which we take to say, this is the direction I'm gonna go in because this is straight. This is the way. And that gives me comfort as we head into this new year because I know that God's grace is going to be there for me to sustain me. I've experienced it in a very powerful way in this past year, as many of you know, God's sustaining grace. And his grace is there for you as well. And the reason that it anchors my soul, that it anchors my life, is because I know it is truth. He is full of grace and truth. And the idea of being full of grace and truth is like the water running over the edge of the cup. It is filled to overflowing. And as you enter into this new year, as you enter into this week of celebrating with your family and friends, don't lose sight even for a moment of the fact that Christ wants to be with you. He wants to walk with you. He wants to set up his tent among you. Know that in the presence of his spirit, wherever you go, he is with you. He will never fail you and he will never forsake you. What an incredible gift that we have at this Christmas time. And I invite you, as I often do on Sundays, that if you've never trusted Christ, if you've never received his gift of salvation, today is the day. Why not just in simple faith say, Lord Jesus, I'm asking you to be my savior, to be my Lord, to fill me with your presence. Forgive me for my sins and with your help, I wanna live the life that you've called me to live. Thank you for giving me a new beginning. Thank you for your grace. And thank you for the truth that I cannot outline you, 
or I cannot distance myself from the grasp of your hand. Amen. You know, I hope that you will write to me or stop by the church in the next week or so, because I'd like to give you a copy of this little book, Why Christmas? And it helps to understand the Christmas story. It also helps to understand that if you've prayed today to receive Jesus as your savior, what it means and how you can get going and growing in your Christian life. Merry Christmas to all of us from North End Church. Well, everybody, that concludes our Christmas morning service. I just want to say for myself and on behalf of all the staff and leaders here at North End, I truly do hope that you have been blessed this morning. I hope that you have a safe and Merry Christmas wherever you're at. I hope that you uh, just are safe, that you enjoy time with friends and family, uh, and that this time to reflect on God's Word uh, has been a blessing to you this Christmas. So may God's grace and peace be with you the rest of the holidays. Stay safe, and we'll see you in person again sometime soon.